Okay, we're back here with another lesson with TV Production Guy. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some more into the timeline and some other features. Uh, let's start by opening up our project that uh, we currently or previously were working on. Uh, let's see here. Try one. Okay, we got our we got our practice one we were working on with earlier. And what I want to do is I'm going to come to the end here. I'm going to just kill this one shot out. I'm actually going to open up one of my older projects just to get some video for us. So let me just quickly find that. So I'm just going to come into the preview here. I'm going to find here's a shot. I'll just take this girl, dance on fire. Okay. There we go. We'll take it out, put an O for out right there. And we're just going to already have our video one, our audio one, our audio two selected. We're just going to go overwrite this right down to the, to the bottom. And uh, now we'll just look for another quick shot here so we can make this a little bit longer than what it is. Here's a guy blowing flame out of his mouth. Okay, I'm going to set an endpoint. Play it with spacebar, and there he goes. He just did it, so I'll stop it right there. I'm gonna do it again, real quick. We'll watch him do it again. There we go. One more time. Stop, and we'll set an out point right there. We'll overwrite this one. Just want to get a couple series of shots here, so we can get this training going. I'm gonna put it, throw another piece of video in. Uh, I think we got some of these here. We'll use this creepy guy right here. Set an endpoint. Play. Okay, we'll set our out, stop and set our out point. I'm going to come back. I'm just going to throw this one in the middle because we're going to do overwrites when we want the the clip to come right down to the bottom and right, right where all the end of our stuff is. We'll put our cursor and we'll overwrite because that's overwrite. It's not overwriting on anything. So it lays down there. I'm going to undo that with Command Z because that's undo. And I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do an insert one. What it's going to do is it's going to take these two and it's going to push them to the left. And it's going to take these two and push them to the right. So watch how it does that. I'm just going to grab it and drop it in there. And now you have this guy who comes, now you have this shot, and then it goes to that guy, and then it comes to the fire girl, and then this guy blowing fire. So it takes the shots and it just pushes it right in the middle and pushes the other two to the side, to the left side and the other two to the right side. That's the difference between an overwrite edit and an insert edit. If I were to take this shot and do an insert edit right here on this line, what would happen would be it would go actually go over some of this. We'd lose some of that footage. See how it does that? It lost some of that footage. It's giving me this red line right here, in case you're wondering that. This red line because it's saying the shot is repeated in the timeline, and it is right back here because that's where we put this shot a second ago. But I wanted you to be able to see. Look at the difference here. See how it did that? It, it kills over some of it when you overwrite at a different point. So now you've lost some of that video that you had right there. That's why you want to do. That's why you want to do an insert edit there. Um, one of the things I want to show you is if I'm dragging along, I want to get right on. We talked about using the up and down arrows. If I use the up arrow, it's going to go to the left. I hit up, and it goes right to that previous cut. If I hit hit up again, it's going to go right here to this cut up. And it does. Up again, and it's going to go to this one. If I hit down, it's going to go to the right. Down, right to the cut. And it's going to go to this one. Down. Hit the down arrow, it's going to go right to this one. Okay. Now, when I have my mouse and I'm trying to do this, there's actually a way I can have it snap right on to these little things without having to hit the up or down arrows. And it's called snapping. And there's a couple ways you can turn this on. You can turn this on one way by coming over here. And clicking on this guy, you got, when you pulled over, it actually says snapping. And now it's on. So now when I'm coming through, it actually snaps to the cuts. And this can be very, very helpful. Now let's turn it off there. See, now it's off. It's not lit up. The other way to turn it on, another way to turn it on, is to hit the end key. And I hit the end key, and look, the light comes on over here. And now when I scroll through, it's snapping. I'll hit the end key again to turn it off, and you'll see it turns off, and you'll see my snapping is now off. 
Um, the other way to turn it on is to come up to here, view, and come down here, and here it is snapping. I'll turn it on, and it snaps to the cuts. Now, I like to leave it on, so I'm going to leave it on. For me personally, I like to leave it on, so I'm going to leave it on. Um, you might not like it. If you want to turn it off, turn it off. Another thing up here in the view menu, menu that I want to show you is audio scrubbing. If you're the type of person who likes to be able to hear the audio while you're scrubbing through it very roughly in the background, then I suggest you turn on audio scrubbing. We'll turn this on. I just click. You'll see again if I come onto it, it checks so it's on. And watch as we scroll through the timeline. You can actually hear some gnats. And where this comes in handy is if you're trying to get a bite and you're trying to hear somebody talk, you can actually scroll through them and you can kind of get a glimpse of what they're saying. Maybe you're trying to find a perfect bite. Yeah, that's the real question. Oh, that's the real question? Yeah, that's the real question. Yeah, that's the real question. We got that one. Now what I did with that one was I just used the uh, left and right arrows because with the scrubbing on, as you're hitting left arrow and right arrow back and forth, it's going to give you that, that little bit of their nap pop. Now when we come down the timeline, it's also going to do it. So as, you're, as you're scanning, it's also going to do it. It's going to let you hear what's going on in the background. Just a little bit fast forward as fast as you go with your thing, your cursor. Um, so if you like to have that on, you can ha you can keep that on, and that can help you find your shots a little bit better if you're you're looking for the start of a word or something like that. Um, you know, preference type. If you like to use that, leave it on. I don't like to use it. I'm going to turn it off. Another thing I want to show you is you might have noticed as I'm laying stuff down, there's these little lines coming in. You see them right here on each clip. Those are actually called waveforms. And I was thinking about it, I actually, that's the way I have my system set up. Your system probably isn't set up like that. Your system probably has them coming in clear. So I want to just show you real quick, going to go into the settings of my sequence. So I'm going to go right click, settings, and I'll come up to my settings. If I go to uh, timeline options, I actually have show audio waveforms checked. If I uncheck it and click OK, you'll notice they're all gone. This is probably how yours looks. Now, I'll go back into this personal one and show you, if I go back up in here, go to Timeline Options, Show Audio Waveforms, and look, they're back. Now I know that Channel 1 doesn't have any audio waveforms, and Channel 2 does have audio waveforms. To change that in your overall settings, you can come up to Final Cut Pro, User Preferences, go to Timeline Options, and you can click Show Audio Waveforms right there. And what that'll do for you is every time you make a new sequence, automatically it will show audio waveforms for you. Now also in the timeline I want you to notice is, is let's say I'm at this cut, but I want to get a little bit closer. Right down here in the bottom left is the zoom, the zoom tool. And what it does is you can see as I pull it to the left, I zoom in to where my cursor is. My cursor is right here. You can see I zoom into it. Now, this bar right here, I don't recommend using. This can get you very confusing and lost in your edit as to where you are. Clicking on it, jumping someplace. So what I recommend is using the wheel and using a very important key. When I want to get back and I want to see my, everything I have on the timeline, basically fit the timeline, all the video I have on the timeline into the timeline window, this is the most important key command I can give you. It is Shift and Z. And now look what it did. It took the entire timeline and squeezed all the video into, into our timeline so we can nicely see it. And it actually reset our zoom uh, scroller. And remember, if we grab that, here we are right in here. We'll go to this cut. If I want to scroll into that cut, I just got to grab that little triangle and pull to the, right, to the left. I'll hit Shift-Z again. Just don't want to show you what happens when I pull the triangle to the right. It zooms out is what it does. Again, you pull to the left and it's going to zoom in. You pull to the right, it's going to zoom out. Pull to the left, zoom in. Pull to the right, zoom out. Hopefully you got that. Now let's just fit this video to the, the entire timeline window. I like to do that a lot through my edits. 
and it'll probably help you out a lot so you can just see where you are and where you want to go to your next spot to work. Maybe I want to go right to here. Now I can zoom in and I could work in here. Now, let's come click on up here. We'll hit home to go all the way back to the beginning and I'll hit shift Z again. I want to talk a little bit about cutting in the timeline. Let's say I'm watching this guy and I get to this point and I say, you know what? He's up for too long. I'm going to come back. I'm going to watch. I'm going to stop here. What I want to do is I want to eliminate the rest of this so it goes to this next shot. And what I can do then is I can set an endpoint there. You see, I, set, I hit an I for an endpoint, and there's the little endpoint key. I'm going to hit my down arrow to come back to this cut. And you see, now I'm on the next shot. I'm on the next shot. I don't want to be on that shot. I'm going to come back one frame. I'm going to hit the left arrow back, and I'm going to set an out point. So this is the little spot right here that I want to kill out. I want to delete, but I want to ripple delete. I want to ripple delete it. And what that means is I'm going to delete it out, and this and this are going to come together. And to do that, I'm going to hit, I have my in and my out set. I'm going to hit Shift X. Okay. So I've hit Shift X, and now I've shortened that clip so it goes to the next shot quicker. Now let's see if I want to, let's say this one's too long. You know what? Actually, what I want to do is I want that spin to start a little bit sooner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen, stop. Right there is where I want it to start. So I'm going to set an out point. I'm going to hit my up arrow to come back to the cut. And there I am on the first frame. If I go back one, one frame to the left, that's my old shot. I don't want to set my, my end point there. So I'm going to come back. There I am. The first frame, I'm going to set my end point. So now this little section that's highlighted, I'm going to delete. That key command again is Shift X. So I have now deleted that little spot. Here's that shot again. You know what? I go up. Oh, wait a second. How did that shot get repeated? Well, of course, we put it in. But let's delete that whole second, that repeated shot out. Okay, you want another way to do this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my cursor so it snaps right to this cut. I want to delete this whole guy out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to lasso this. Just left click and hold and drag over top of this clip. And all I'm going to do is drag it right over top. Once it snaps, I'll feel it snap. And that's going to be right on the cut. And now that shot is gone where it was repeated. Uh, one other thing I want to show you in the timeline now is, is this button right down here. You'll see what it does is when I turn it on, Ah, it gives me these red lines in the audio. And what that gives me the ability to do is, the audio always starts off at zero. What it gives me the ability to do is to pull the audio up or pull the audio down to make it lower or make it higher. Close your ears. Get ready. All right. So that's what that key does. And I'd like to have that on at all times because I like to be able to come in and control my audio bring it down over tracks, bring it down over sots, or bring it up for a nap pop. Um, so I like to have that key on. This key all the way to the left here, this toggle keyframe clip, uh, I don't recommend turning this one on. I don't have any use for it. I don't use it. It, it puts a little bit extra stuff in here. I think it actually has to do, it's, it's used for uh, using the speed controls in, uh, in FCP, if I'm correct. I'm not positive I am. Um, but the speed controls in FCP aren't that useful. Uh, I'll show you some other ways to do it. It's for the time remapping, but uh, I'll show you some other ways to do speeding in, in a later lesson. So for now, I'm going to turn that back off so I'm back to normal. And that'll do, for, do it for our timeline portion of some stuff I wanted to show you. There's definitely some more things I want to show you. Um, probably next, or my next lesson will be on audio. And then we're going to get into how to, what this audio has to do with, what the locks have to do with, um, turning the audio on and off so you can hear different channels. And uh, we'll get into just how to doing audio very properly. All right. Uh, that's it for this lesson. This is TV Production Guy signing off.